a factor on this fall afternoon, but no rain in the forecast. That's the good news as you three, and we've got a good one in store as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's the first weekend of autumn, and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. It's Lawrence rolling to his right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Denzel Perryman with a sack. A lot of talk the other day about them wanting to quiet this home crowd early and often. Very first play of the game. They do just that. You're exactly right about that because that's often a conversation when you go on the road and you travel. Hey, let's take the crowd out of it. What a great way of doing so by putting the quarterback on the deck. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Off the play fake. Here's Lawrence. They'll roll him out right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. Now Austin. A great return there of 22 yards. And the Texans with great. materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You look at this Jaguar defense. They were terrific last week in the victory over Kansas City. And all defensive teams that I know talk about creating turnovers, takeaways, they call them. And anytime you can get two or more in a game, you've had a really, really good performance. They exceeded that number in a big way. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. From the gun, here's Pickett. Escaping the pressure right. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot, but it's third down. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. To the sideline and incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. 
And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And it's now 3-0 Texans. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. We spent so much time talking about the physical side of the game. How about the mental side? They just gave up a field goal, but they didn't get down at all. Big time return. They're set up to try and at least tie the game up. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Now, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game. But I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra injury. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has a... ETN going to have a Jags first down as he'll take this down to the 44-yard line. The Jaguars at 2-0 here to begin the season. And off to exactly the start you're hoping for. Nothing for the fan base to complain about, at least not yet. <laughs> I like the way that you phrased that. Yeah, you don't want to get too excited. There's a still a long ways to go. But they've come out playing good fun. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Texans are going to take possession here as they've got it at their own four-yard line. He got out of the pocket there, was wondering what he was going to do with it, but I think he was calling, his receiver was calling for the ball, wasn't he? He certainly was a problem. He called for it too late, and when he delivered, they were all over him in the secondary and came up with the interception. Tackle made by Foley Fadukasi, the former UConn Husky. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room if you have to run the punter out there. He can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Here's Pickett on second down. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. Third and long. Pickett from his own end zone. Flushed out right. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll go out of bounds after getting this across the 15. Give him 17 on the pickup there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. Blitz coming and down he goes. Josh Allen collapses the pocket and drops him for a loss of three. Four seasons in the league, and even with the addition of the number one overall pick to his defense last year, Allen remained the face of the Jaguars' pass rush. Again, led his team with seven sacks and a career high, four forced fumbles. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. Off play action, pick it. He'll buy some time right. Oh, now he'll try and chuck it deep left side. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. Up with something here on third down. Now pick it. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Texans football to start quarter two as they've got it with a first and ten.
working out of the gun. It's Pickett being chased out left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Second and 10, it's Pickett again. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? And now this one may draw a penalty. He just blindly threw that one to the sideline. And yep, indeed, the flag is out. They lose the yardage, and of course, they also lose the down on the grounding call, and it's quickly second and long. Here's Pickett. Screen, it'll set up a third down. Dialing up another pass here. Pick it. He'll let it fly for Austin. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give him credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. On fourth down, Matt Ariza sent on to punt. Back deep for Jacksonville. The dangerous Jamal Agnew. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They work now on second and nine. Looking to throw, Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone, but unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield, and he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. A short gain of just over two yards as the first half clock dips inside of three minutes. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. They go play action with Lawrence. Sliding out of the pocket. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. This is caught inside the 15. Have taken the lead. Extra point from McManus is good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted, 
They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with a slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Pick it to throw on first down. Flush to his right. He'll get this complete to Calvin Austin. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Escaping the pressure right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Sacks a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Back to throw. Pick it. He finds Austin complete. So give him two yards there on the completion. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that's going to bring up a fourth that within a point at seven to six. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And with a one-point lead, you'd have to think they'll be looking just to get this to halftime. They'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Rolling to his right. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Good defensive call right there because they had someone shadowing him along his entire route. And he was right there ready to provide a hit that prevents him from making another catch to his big start. Third down, and they're going to try the jet sweep. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as it's Audi A Sports. The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to put. Now the ball comes loose, and the Jags grab it. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. 
So the opposite of what they envisioned when they left that locker room, a turnover on the opening drive of this third quarter. I like your identification there, because that's exactly what they discussed in the locker room before they came out on the field. Let's get the ball, let's go down and score, put some points on the board and feel good about it. Not an insurmountable lead, but definitely not how they saw it at halftime. First and ten, it's ETN. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. On second down, a run by H.A. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. ETN up the middle. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. A give up the middle to H.A. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Job there finding room to maneuver, and he worked his way into another first down. And look, they had great field position to start. The boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. He's crossing. He's checking crap. Sure, sure. He's coming. Double up. Double up. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Man in motion is Agnew. They'll run for it with A-Chain. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Fourth down, here's Lawrence. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown. It's off with six points. McManus's point after is good, and the lead is up to eight. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. Exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play multiple plays that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. Buying time to his left. And he finds his target. It's Schultz. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. It's a big one now. It's a big one. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. 
Pierce now up the middle. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Foyer Aluakon finding his way to the ball for a stop. A tackle for loss. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 38-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. He was out there waving his arms, and when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is, because you got to get his attention, because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot for the completion. Back now in Jacksonville. First and 10, here's Pickett. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Pick it. He goes. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, they certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. Nine-yard line, second and six. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. His pass caught at the four. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Pierce Pierce will take this one in for a Texans touchdown. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They've still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. Pickett will try to throw for this. That's caught at the two, but he is not going to make it. It's a big play by the defense, and they're going to hold on to their two-point lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And with that last touchdown, I mean, we're set up for a good finish here. Some things to consider, Charles. Obviously, it's a very close game. You're in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they've got all three timeouts in their back pocket. So the chess match really ramps up, doesn't it? Because in these situations, what do you do? Do you run timeouts at early as opportunity? Or wait till you hit the two-minute warning? So there's a lot going into this one. Let's see how each side goes about their strategy. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. And they'll go again with ETN. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Third down, here's a chain. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. 
I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Running left, it's A chain. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Third down and six. Back to throw, Lawrence. They'll roll him out right. Aaron it out, looking for Ridley. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Touchdown! Their fourth quarter lead. Extra point from McManus is good. And it might seal the deal as it makes it a two-score game here with not a lot of time remaining. Touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. This is first and ten. Here's Pickett. Eluding the pressure right. Oh, what a grab by Woods. And wrangled down quickly just past the 40 at the 41. All three timeouts still remain. Keep that in mind. They prefer to use them on the defensive end. But here's first and ten. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw here, pick it. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Bears it out toward the corner of the end zone. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. It's still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. Little clock management 101. Ready. 
He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. It happened in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. What a ball game this was. What an atmosphere this was. And the home team getting the late touchdown, getting the victory, and now everybody in this building can file away with smiles on their faces. And what do real estate people tell us all the time? It's location, location, location. So being at home, that can be a big deal because remember, they were down to their final chance to retake the lead. That home field advantage, I think it helped fuel all what happened for them down the stretch. A huge win. So for Jacksonville, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for the Texans, they'll fall to 1-2. And, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.